Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on the parliamentary hearings of the Commissioner's Designate. In July, MEPs elected Ursula von der Leyen as the next European Commission President. But before the new Commission can take office, it'll need to pass one more test. The public hearings organised by the Parliament to assess the suitability of the Commission's designate for their jobs. But how does that process work? Stay with us and we will walk you through the ins and outs of this exciting process. At the end of May, more than 200 million Europeans in 28 EU countries went to the polls to elect the members of the next European Parliament. They now sit in the chamber with a strong democratic mandate, including to vote into office the new European Commission and assess the competencies, ideas and plans of its new president and the future commissioners. Since MEP is elected the head of the new commission in July, she's been busy putting together a team to run the institution over the next five years. Their names and portfolios have now been revealed, but before they can take office, they will be invited to a three-hour hearing to prove to the members of the European Parliament that they are the right people for the jobs. Now, how does that work? Well, after responding to a written questionnaire and presenting their declarations of interest to ensure there are no conflict of interests in connection with their future portfolios, each Commissioner-designate appears before the appropriate parliamentary committees or bodies to answer both general and specific questions. Over three often very stressful hours, they will try to convey their vision and explain to MEPs and citizens watching from all corners of Europe what they will do should they get the Parliament's blessing. But what happens if they're not convincing enough? Stay with us. Well, once the European Parliament has elected the President of the Commission, it can only refuse or accept the Commission in its entirety and not individual Commissioners designate, just as many national parliaments cannot vote on individual members of the government. However, the threat to vote down the designated Commission has proven to be a powerful means to encourage the replacement of Commissioners designate opposed by Parliament or a change in their portfolios. In 2004, for instance, the Italian nominee's comments on the role of women and homosexuality drew sharp criticism from MEPs, forcing the then president-elect, José Manuel Barroso, to come back with new names and changes of portfolio. More recently, in 2014, Alenko Bratusek, who had been proposed for the energy portfolio, withdrew her candidacy following a negative evaluation by the Parliament's Energy and Environment Committees and was replaced by Violetta Bulch, who took up her duties as Commissioner for Transport. What's clear is that the Parliament's hearings have substantially strengthened the Commission's democratic accountability and given the Parliament a greater role in agenda setting at EU level. But it wasn't always like this. No, it hasn't been. Commissioners were originally appointed by common accord with the Member States' governments for a period of four years and the Parliament had no say. But over time and with the successive treaties and enlargements of the EU, the Parliament has increased its clout in the process. Many see the deepening political link between the two as a step towards further democratisation of the EU decision-making process, but this is not welcomed by all. Some fear a parliamentary-based commission would not be independent enough. Others warn of the excessive politicisation of the hearings and see the Parliament's power to reject the whole commission based on the poor performance of just one candidate as somewhat disproportionate. However, whilst an ordeal, once passed, the hearings can also strengthen the new commissioners' positions and the legitimacy of their future actions. So maybe it is worth the effort after all. You're listening to European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts.